what does success look like to you? And does your vision for success have one essential component called conscious well-being? We're going to talk exactly about what conscious well-being is and why that is important for your success in this episode. Hello, hello. Okay, so last week we talked about creating a vision for a life and a law practice that you love. I highly suggest that you go back to that episode and you download the PDF that I created for it. It's called Designing a Vision for a Life and Law Practice that You Love. You can listen to the episode and download the guide at dinacataldo.com forward slash 304. So a vision is what your version of success looks like. And there is a key component of creating any vision that I want to focus on today, and that is conscious well-being. This is not about self-care, but self-care is part of it. It's about reconnecting with yourself and what you want and not letting society's structure decide your life for you. That requires that we have awareness of what we're being spoon-fed by the world around us and taking a step back to ask ourselves what we truly want. It takes our conscious decision to do what we know is right for us, even when it's not what the mainstream in the legal community or in our friend circles might think is the right thing to do. That's really what conscious well-being is. It's our ability to be present with ourselves long enough to make conscious decisions in alignment with what we want, whether it's in our practice, our relationships, what we decide to eat, with what we decide to add to our lives or cut out of our lives, with who we decide to hire, when we decide to hire, with what tasks and projects we do and we don't want to take on. And this is not a practice of perfection, okay, because we can't be perfect at this. We are humans. We can't be present all the time. We're going to make mistakes. That's okay. There are obviously just so many things in this world vying for our attention. And until we decide to become monks on a mountaintop somewhere, well, we are always going to have things pulling for our attention. So do not use this concept of conscious well-being as a whip to beat yourself up. Use it as a tool to help yourself move more into alignment with conscious well-being as you define it for yourself. And stay till the end of this episode because I am going to ask you a question to help you measure where you are right now with your conscious well-being and know what your next steps are. One area where we can really dig into this concept of conscious well-being, because it's just so easy to see with our eyes, you're going to see exactly what I'm talking about as we go through this, is the topic of success. Most of society respects lawyers, right? Even if you hear those occasional jokes, it is because lawyers are well respected. They're known for being incredibly intelligent. And most people believe that lawyers are all making lots of money and they have a lot of money. And by anyone's standards, yes, we do make a lot of money. And if you're a lawyer, then society considers you successful, right? As high achievers, I actually believe that we are drawn into the legal profession or drawn to the legal profession because it's painted as one marker of success in our society. Other professions considered markers of success are brain surgeons, astrophysicists, senators, presidents, any profession that requires some letters after our name or an honorific title like doctor or counselor. It's very well respected if you are a student. These are outside markers of success. There are other markers our society also tells us demonstrate we are successful, and these markers are outside of our job description, like Land Rovers, Gucci purses, gold rings, a spouse, having children, having children who are intelligent or in the gifted program, having children going to the quote unquote right universities, buying a house. How many times have you been at a dinner party and people have name dropped things? It's fascinating to see what we come up with to be in alignment with society and how we identify ourselves as successful and how other people identify themselves as successful. There's nothing wrong or bad about any of this, but I just want you to notice that none of these are internally referenced markers. And because we possess these external markers, even though there's no external proof of it and our society thinks it's in bad taste to talk about it, right? So people can infer 
that we have money, right? If we possess these items, if we have these things going on in our life, people can also infer that we have money. And money is an external marker of success to people. And when they can infer that, then we can infer that, right? Our society has taught us having these things means we are successful. They are all markers, external markers that other people will see, like a tattoo on your forehead, like a bumper sticker on your car marking something you believe is significant about you and you believe other people should know about you. In fact, you don't even have to have money or a nice car or a purse. We can get all of those on credit. And a lot of us do that so we can show others, hey, look, I'm successful. And maybe we're even doing it to show ourselves that. And I'm not saying you don't buy the nice purse or you don't buy the nice car. I'm only offering that you check in and ask yourself what you might be making this possession, this particular thing mean about you or what you want other people to think about you if you have it. It's just fascinating. It's a fascinating exercise to go through. I am all for having what we want. You probably know that if you've been listening to this podcast for any length of time. This is just an exercise to help you get to know yourself and gaining that consciousness of who we are being in the world and who we want to be in the world. So those are all external markers of success that we've been taught. Let other people know that we are successful. Now let's take a look at what internal markers look like. An internally referenced marker of success is something no one else can see or know for sure. It's something we know for ourselves. It may even be something we're a little self-conscious about at first because it's so different from what other people are doing or what we've been taught is socially acceptable. Internally referenced markers of success really come down to you living the life that you want and breaking down the structures that have told you what success should look like. It's doing things like deciding you want to say no to someone's request simply because you don't want to, because you value something more, like your quiet time or peace of mind. This takes internal fortitude. No one can see it or may even understand it. They may even judge you for not saying yes to their request. It's doing things like deciding you want to start a business, even when it feels like you're taking a step backwards in terms of your prestige or your title. You may even have people tell you this. I had that happen, right? But you are certain of what you want and you stay with it. It's doing things that we might be afraid other people will think are strange, like deciding we want to leave the office at four o'clock while everyone else in the office stays until six or seven, or deciding to go for a walk in the middle of the day, even though everyone else is sitting at their desks. It's doing something like making a decision that other people might disagree with or may even displease others, like saying no to an assignment others think is a really big deal because you know that it's not in alignment with what you truly want to do or it's not going to move you in the direction you want to go. Other people may not understand that and so they may even judge you for it. It's doing things like for entrepreneurs, setting a schedule that works for your life and raising your rates to reflect the results that you get to your get your clients, not out of fear that your clients are going to leave you. In all cases, it's making what you want a priority, but we're not taught to be internally referenced and we're definitely not taught to value what we want as important. We're taught to look outside ourselves to see whether we're successful and whether we're doing things and having things that other people think are important. So doing these things is incredibly uncomfortable. It's going against the norm. It's breaking down structures that you've been immersed in for 20, 30, 40, 50 years or more. And I have experienced all of them. One of the easiest ways that I have seen this show up with lawyers and a really great example that I can show you here on the podcast is when I show lawyers how to make a calendar that aligns with what they want. It is a totally different way of them looking at their time. And I can get a lot of resistance, a lot of pushback from lawyers who have told themselves over the years calendars don't work for them or that they simply don't have time to sit down with a calendar. I get it. I was resistant too until I saw the power of doing things differently and I saw the impact that it had on my quality of life and saw that I was taking action more consistently. 
I didn't have to be perfect at it. I didn't have to use my calendar to beat myself up and tell myself I wasn't doing enough. I could just see like, oh, yeah, okay, I can see where I am taking more action. I could actually keep track of it and I could be proud of myself for that. So the key to making a calendar that you will actually do and that you're not going to use to beat yourself up is to put you on your calendar first. Crazy, right? Put you time on the calendar. Then you put family events on the calendar and then you put work. That feels uncomfortable for every single person who's a high achiever, who's a lawyer, right? It is going to feel uncomfortable because that is not what we are taught, okay? We are taught work. The ultimate evidence that we are successful per the legal profession comes first above family and definitely above ourselves. So let me repeat that because your brain just might have skipped over this part because it's so foreign to us. So when you are creating a calendar, you put you time on the calendar first, gym, quiet time, time to read a book for fun, gardening, what you want to do, what you want. And then second, you put your family and friend time on the calendar events, dinners, etc. And third, you put work, time blocks for assignments, phone calls, checking emails, etc. And right now your brain might be coming up with all kinds of objections. I want you to quiet your brain for a second because this is not about time management. This is about conscious well-being and whether or not you're practicing it. And if you haven't been really involved in this world and really in in really leveling up this area, it, it could feel really uncomfortable right now. I want you to know that's normal. Okay, this is so foreign that it can feel scary breaking up these old structures. And if you're feeling resistance, it's because you're so immersed in the structure. I get it. I was there for 16 plus years just in the legal profession. And then even before that, when you're in university and you're in schooling before that. So that's all normal. I want to bring us back here, though, because... You don't have to believe me about any of this. Just try it. You're going to realize how much less you resent work and how much more you're going to accomplish at the office when you make what you want a priority. But I want you to see this. When you do something like this, when you start breaking down structures, when you start doing things completely differently than what the legal profession has told you is okay or what your brain has told you is safe, and you make what you want and prioritizing what you want important That is an internal marker of success. In the seeking of success as others define it, we lose connection with ourselves and what we want. We lose connection with our well-being. We lose connection with what feels right. We start second-guessing ourselves. We start overthinking. And none of that matters. All those external markers, what other people think, none of that matters. And people will judge you. They won't understand. I've had clients who have had lawyers walk into their office just kind of quizzical, like, how do you get so much done? Like, what's going on here? And at first, it started as kind of judgment, like little jokes here and there, right? This attorney told me that, yeah, they they would make little jokes like, oh, you're leaving early again, or oh, you're taking Friday off again. And then later, they started coming in and saying, like, how do you do it? Can you show me how you manage your time? Because I'm so overwhelmed. I don't know what to do with myself. So people will judge you. They're not going to understand it. But when they start seeing you killing it, they're going to want to know your secret. I'm going to give you a little example here of how these external and internally referenced markers can really impact our trajectory. So Stephen King, you probably know him. He is an author. He was rejected by 30 publishers. If he were to submit to external markers of success, he would have stopped submitting his work and gone on to do something else, right? Because 30 rejections, right? That feels horrible being rejected. But here's the thing about external markers of success. They don't always mean you're successful. Just like what I was saying about how you could get a purse on credit. (laughs) That having a nice purse doesn't mean that you're successful or somebody else having that nice purse doesn't mean they're successful. It just means they have a purse. Because Stephen King didn't rely on those external markers of success, having the acceptance letters immediately, he was told by these publishers, like, these these stories were not going to sell, that his type of writing simply wasn't good, that it was not something that people were ever going to buy. But because he didn't rely on what other people were thinking and saying about his work, he's now worth over $500 million. That's pretty crazy, right? So not allowing what other people believed made a successful story helped him create 
his um, internal markers of success, right? He just believed his own internal markers that this is what a story is. This is how I write. This is going to be successful and I'm going to keep at it and I'm going to keep getting better at my craft. That's pretty mind bending, right? Like ignoring what other people think and beginning to follow what you want to do, then you can begin creating not only those internal markers of success, but then they begin becoming reflected externally, right? But it's got to start internally. I will offer to you that because Stephen King dropped the expectation of creating those external markers of success, that he made what he wanted a priority and that he created success on his terms. But it all starts with those internal markers and getting in alignment with them and understanding whether you're connected or not. And as long as we're looking outside of ourselves for the signals that we're successful, we are going to stay disconnected from what we want and attached to what other people want us to be. So here's a question to ask yourself to get awareness over whether you're more externally referenced or internally referenced. This is not a tool to beat yourself up with, my friend. It is an awareness tool. And at the end of this, I am going to give you a few questions to think about to take this further. All right. So I want you to answer this question. On a scale from one to four, how well are you watching out for your well-being? Here's what a one looks like, okay? A one is, I often feel overwhelmed or pressured. I often don't feel like I know enough or am good enough at my work. I often tell myself that I need to suck it up and get over it. I often tell myself I should be better or further along than I am now. I often tell myself I need to do more. I'm often impatient and am quick to anger. I often snap at my husband or wife and then I feel guilty about it. I often feel guilty when I take time off. I often tell myself there's nothing I can do, so I better just deal with it. My happiness often depends on what other people think about me or the work that I'm doing. I often find myself working later hours because I want other people to think that I'm a hard worker. I often reach for substances like unhealthy foods, alcohol, or something else to numb out or feel better or take the edge off. I often overdo things to feel better, like work out until my body wants to collapse or create strict rules for myself that I need to comply with to feel better about myself. Here's what a four looks like. 90% of the time, notice this, okay? I'm going to pause right here. 90% of the time is what I say. I want you to see this because a four does not mean perfection. We are all human and we all have human days. We have all done the things that I just mentioned So so I don't want you to think that a four is perfection. Don't use this as a tool to beat yourself up. 90% of the time, I feel calm and relaxed. I manage my time well. I am kind to myself. I am kind to others. I ask for what I want. I'm honest with myself and others about what I need. I feel good about the work that I do. I take time off without feeling guilty. I feel confident that I'm doing exactly what needs to get done. I don't care what other people think. I'm present with my family and my friends. I feel like I'm good at managing my emotions. If you're at a three or a four, that's amazing. This is an opportunity to celebrate and to see just how far you have come. Because I know from personal experience that getting there takes dedication and commitment to personal growth. So amazing for you. I celebrate you today. If you're at a one or a two, this is an opportunity to see where you can take your life to the next level. I want you to start by asking yourself this. Where will you be six months from now, a year from now, If you continue down the path that you're on, what will be the impact on your emotional well-being, the emotional well-being of your family, the impact on your practice if you continue down that road? And when you sit with this, when you sit with the impact, do you like what you see? And I'm going to assume that you don't. I'm going to assume that you don't like what you see. So the next question is, what are you prepared to do about it? Because What's gotten you here is not going to get you to the next level. It's not going to get you where you want to go. 
the habits you've created so far will not help you live into the vision that you've created for your life. You've got to create new habits. You've got to start breaking down those old structures. We've got to start peeling back those layers one at a time so we can reconnect with our center. Our center is where what we want is, and we've got to say yes to that. We've got to incorporate that into our vision for our future. If you are ready to start peeling back those layers to reconnect with what you want, so you can be in that three or four range, or let's say you're in a three or a four range, I want to take your life to a five or a six. I want you to just live the most amazing life, to love your practice, to love every aspect of your life. I can help you with that. I help my clients move from where they are to where they want to go consistently. Right now, you might feel like, hey, I can't budge. Like there's just no room for growth. And I want to share with you that's 100% not true. I help my clients with it all the time because if they come to me as a one or a two, I help them get into the realm of a three or a four. And when they come to me at a three or a four, I take them to the realm of fives and sixes. So come book a strategy session with me. We're going to have a good time. You're going to learn about yourself. You're going to understand, hey, there's just some things here that I can tweak that can help me take my life and my law practice to the next level. I'm there to support you. I'm there not only to be your cheerleader, but to help strategize, to help tell you like it is, and to show your brain, hey, don't believe all these externally referenced markers. Let's start creating some internal markers and start really connecting with what you want and aligning everything in your life, everything in your law practice with what you want. Book a strategy session with me at dinacataldo.com forward slash strategy session. And I want to remind you that what you want matters and it's within your power to make it happen. All right, my friend, I will talk to you next week. Have a beautiful rest of your day. Bye.